faith in God. Perseverance. Yeah. Hey, you gon' make it. Yeah, just keep on waiting. Hey, let that hating be your motivation. Hey, you gon' make it. Yeah, just keep on praying. Cause God can hear everything you say. Yeah. He can hear you, man. Hey, you gon' make it. Yeah, just keep on waiting. So, real quick, just wanna let you know, uh, sometimes it helps. I'm gonna be using different thinned out colors of the black. Before I start putting any colors, we're gonna do everything in black and white first. But um, this is how I do it. I got the small cup. This is a half a pint. I cut me out a little notch out of the lid. I put me a screen from the disposable cups and liners. I put a new one in here. I snapped this on and I did the same on two different ones. Um, my, your labeling can go any way you want it. You can go the other way as far as how you label it. But I go from darkest to lightest. Right now I'm only gonna be using two shades. Remember, the airbrush with a smaller tip needle needs a thinned out material versus this one. This is the 3.5. This can use a thicker material. This needs a little bit thinner, so we're gonna reduce it out. Now it doesn't mean that I can't necessarily spray this through here but I can't get that real fine line and the paint might dry faster trying to shoot it out of this small tip. So I thinned it out a little bit to use this one. I'm gonna go ahead and you can kind of see the difference. You see how the cup's more transparent? See when you mix it up, this one doesn't go away. It stays pretty dark, that's your darker paint. This one's reduced with DBC 500 or any kind of color blender. It reduces one to one Mix with your paint and reducer. See how it thins it out? It's already disappearing off the inside of the cup. So that's how we're gonna spray. We're gonna spray with this one first to start doing the detail. We're gonna go into it a little at a time. Follow along. I'm gonna turn the mic off on the camera and uh, we're just gonna take it step by step, a little at a time. Hope you guys enjoy. So here's our mixture. We're gonna start using this one first just to get our shadows down. You want to go light to dark. You never want to put too much dark on. Once you do that, you got to start whiting everything out and starting over. Just going over our outline that we created with our stencil, our man-made stencil that we cut out. Basically just going to fill in the blanks. Everything that you see, everything that you outline, we're going to go back and fill it all in. Getting a little bit of tip dry on my needle. So that means either my paint's a little bit too dry it's coming out the air so I went ahead and made another mixture like the one you see right here on the left I added a little bit more DBC 500 and just a little bit more reducer so it's more transparent now it's able to flow better just got to clean the rest of that other stuff out wipe off the needle and now let's get a better better flow pattern here I'm using the circle template I'm going to measure off the original eye on the original picture and then I'm gonna mask around that circle that I need just like that. And I'm gonna use an art shield underneath to get the line to cover off and mask off the bottom part of the eye. And as far as the circle goes, I'm spraying through that just so we can get the dimensions of that circle on the eye. Take it off, look at it, looks good. I can move forward and just continue to start filling it all in. Now I'm gonna start masking off. This is the number two shadow. It's a little bit darker. I'm gonna start covering, coloring in the mask. I'll eventually go back with even the number one, my darkest one, and go over everything that needs to be solid black. I really wasn't happy with the eyes too much, so I whited them out, and I started over on the eyes and a couple of highlights on the nose. I'm happy with it now. Came out a lot better. So I went ahead and moved forward. Just continue to start following all your lines, continue to do all your shadows, all your folds, all your wrinkles. It's good to have some type of knowledge as far as shadows go. It'll make it easier for you in the process. Otherwise, you just look at the picture and you just do exactly what's on the picture. You want to just, and don't get me wrong, you can kind of add your own little touch, add your own little things. Like this reference picture wasn't the greatest. It's kind of dark. So I kind of went in there and added my own around the pockets and stuff. I did little stitching lines on the belts um, and things like that. So I kind of added my own little touch to certain things. Some things it's, it's hard to see on your picture. That's why it's always good to have a really, really good reference picture to work off of. <clears throat> this was pretty much one of the clearest pictures we found. So that's what I'm using. 
sometimes when people want a, a portrait done to their family member, sometimes it's very hard to get good photos. Photos weren't taken, so you have to try to go, you know, take them to photo shops and try to get them extracted to the best they can just to always have a, a really really good clear picture so you can work out especially with a portrait of a family member you want them to look exactly like the person you're painting and sometimes it's hard because of how the photo comes out so you want to go and get the photo enhanced and and do it better this right here was just a photocopy method we got it off the computer printed it out cut it out as you've seen in the other video and this is how we're doing it so we're just working with what we got but it's coming out pretty good just got to follow all the lines little at a time, light to dark. It's okay to skip around sometimes. I do that. You got to get away from things sometimes. Sometimes you got to stand up and stretch. Sometimes you got to give your eyes a break. You got to just kind of move around. You don't want to stay on the same spot because you'll end up hammering it down with too much paint you're gonna mess something up so just get away and move around see as here I went back to the neck and I'm doing his bandana and I'm just kind of just kind of bouncing around I want everything to come out how I want it to come out so it's vital that I just move around from spot to spot got a good deal of his shirt done still quite a bit that needs to be done but it's it's getting better The orange lines you see on there are, are fine tape lines. Those are were gonna be his his rope, I guess you could say. I'm not really familiar with the terminology that goes around the hat that ties down his hat. That's coming off the hat. It's just not having detail that yet. I have it masked off. I'm gonna do that later and put the little the weaving and the lines inside the rope. Went ahead and outlined my bullets on the belt, doing the conchos on the belt. That picture on the left hand side is kind of hard and to see, but even though we're trying to detail the bullets and conchos and as much as we possibly can, keep in mind that this picture is not done. Even though we do all this, we're going to overlay it with a transparent yellowish brownish color to give it like an older effect. But even then, it's not done. Everything that you see, those bullets, conchos, chrome pieces, uh, stainless steel pieces on his belt, whatever, anything that's shiny in his eyes, highlights on the face, we're going to go back and hit everything with white once we're done. We haven't got to that phase yet. I'm just trying to show you what it's looking like right now, just in the black and white phase as it is. We still have to go back and touch everything up with the white to make it really, really pop. As of right now, this is the outcome. It's looking really good. I'm happy with it. I'm sure the customer is going to be pleased with it. Step by step. Stay tuned to the next video. Thanks for tuning in. He got a plan for you, boy. Got a plan for you. He got a plan for you. They said I wouldn't.